Senior Coyote, and the Tricked Trickster. One day, long ago in Mexico's land of sand and giant cactus, Senior Coyote and Senior Mouse had a quarrel. None now alive can remember why, but recalling what spirited caballeros these two were, I suspect that it was some small thing that meant little. Be that as it may, these two took their quarrel seriously and for a long time would not speak to each other. Then, one day, Mouse found Senior Coyote caught in a trap. He howled and twisted and fought, but he could not get out. He had just about given up when he saw Senior Mouse grinning at him. Mouse, mi viejo amigo, my old friend, he cried. Please nod this leather strap into and get me out of this trap. But we are no longer friends, Mouse said. We have quarreled, remember? Nonsense, Senior Coyote cried. Why, I love you better than I do Rattlesnake, Owl, or anybody in the desert. You must gnaw me loose, and please hurry, for if the peon catches me, I will wind up in a fur rug on his wife's kitchen floor. Mouse remembered how mean Senior Coyote had been to him. He was always playing tricks on Mouse and his friends. They were very funny to Senior Coyote, for he was a great trickster, but often they hurt little Mouse. I'd like to gnaw you free, he said, but I am old, and my teeth tire easily. Really, Senor Mouse? You are ungrateful, said Senor Coyote reproachfully. Remember all the nice things I've done for you? What were they? Why? Coyote began and stopped. He was unable to think of a single thing. There is a good reason for this. He had done nothing for Mouse but trick him. But Senor Coyote is a sly fellow, he said quickly. Oh, why remind you of them? You remember them all. I fear my memory of yesterday is too dim, said Mouse said, but I could remember very well what you could do for me tomorrow. Tomorrow, Coyote asked. Yes, tomorrow. If I gnaw away the leather rope holding you in the trap, what will you do for me tomorrow? And the day after tomorrow, and the day after the day after tomorrow, and the day... Stop, Senior Coyote cried. How long is this going on? A life is worth a life. If I save your life, you should work for me for a lifetime. That is the only fair thing to do. But everyone would laugh at a big, brave, smart fellow like me working as a slave for a mere mouse, Senior Coyote cried. Is that worse than feeling sad for you because your hide is a rug in the peon's kitchen? Senior Coyote groaned and cried and argued, but finally agreed when he saw that mouse would not help him otherwise. Very well, he said tearfully. I agree to work for you until either of us dies or until I have a chance to get even by saving your life. Mouse said with a sly grin, that is very fine, but I remember what a great trickster you are, so you must also promise that as soon as I free you, that you will not jump on me, threaten to kill me, and then save my life by letting me go. Why, how can you suggest such a thing, Coyote cried indignantly, and then to himself he added, this mouse is getting too smart. Very well, promise, Mouse said. But I am not made for work, Senior Coyote said tearfully. I live by being sly. Then be sly and get out of the trap yourself, Mouse retorted. Very well, Senior Coyote said sadly. I will work for you until I can pay back the debt of my life. And so Mouse gnawed the leather strap in two and Coyote was saved. Then for many days thereafter, Senior Coyote worked for Mouse. Mouse was very proud to have the famous Senior Coyote for a servant. Senior Coyote was greatly embarrassed since he did not like being a servant and disliked working even more. There is nothing he could do since he had given his promise. He worked all day and dreamed all night of how he could trick his way out of his troubles. He could think of nothing. Then one day, Baby Mouse came running to him. My father has been caught by Senior Snake, he cried. Please come and save him. Hooray, cried Coyote. If I save him, I will be released from my promise to work for him. He went out to the desert rocks and found Senor Rattlesnake with his coils around Senor Mouse. Please let him go and I will catch you two more mice, Coyote said. My wise old mother used to tell me that a bird in the hand is worth than two in the bush, Snake replied. By the same reasoning, one mouse in Snake's stomach is worth two in Coyote's mind. Well, I tried, Mouse, Coyote said. I'm sorry, you must be eaten. But you must save me, then you will be free from your promise to me, Mouse said. If you're eaten, I'll be free anyway, Coyote said. Then everyone will say that Coyote was not smart enough to trick Snake, Mel said quickly, and I think they will be right. It makes me very sad, for I always thought Senior Coyote the greatest trickster in the world. 
This made Coyote's face turn red. He was very proud that everyone thought him so clever. Now he just had to save Mouse. So he said to Snake, How did you catch Mouse anyway? A rock rolled on top of him and he was trapped. Mouse said, He asked me to help him roll it off. When I did, he jumped on me before I could run away. That is not true, Snake said. How could a little mouse have the strength to roll away a big rock? There is the rock. Now you tell me if you think Mouse could roll it. It was a very big rock, and Coyote admitted that Mouse could not possibly have budged it. But it is like the story Mama Sita tells her children at bedtime, Mouse said quickly. Once there was a poor burrow who had a load of hay just as large as he could carry. His master added just one more straw, and the poor burrow fell in the dirt. Snake did not have quite enough strength to push the rock off himself. I came along and was like that last straw on the burrow's back, and together we rolled the rock away. Maybe that is true, Snake said, but by Mouse's own words, he did only a very little of the work. So I owe him only a very little thanks. That is not enough to keep me from eating him. Hmm, said Coyote. Now you understand, Snake, that I do not care what happens myself. If Mouse is eaten, I will be free of my bargain anyway. I'm only thinking of your own welfare, Snake. Thank you, said Senior Rattlesnake, but I do enough thinking about my welfare for both of us. I don't need your thoughts. Nevertheless, Coyote insisted, everyone is going to say that you ate Mouse after he was kind enough to help you. I don't care, Snake said. Nobody says anything good of me anyway. Well, said Coyote, I'll tell you what we should do. We should put everything back as it was. Then I will see for myself if Mouse was as much help as he said he was or as little as you claim. Then I can tell everyone that you are right, Snake. Very well, said Senior Snake. I was lying like this and the rock was on me. Like this, Coyote said, quickly rolling the rock across Snake's body. Ouch, said Snake. That is right. Can you get out? Coyote asked. No, said Snake. Then turn Mouse loose and let him push, said Coyote. This, Snake did. But before Mouse could push, Coyote said, But on second thought, if Mouse pushes, you would then grab him again and we'd be back arguing. Since you are both as you were before the argument started, let us leave it at that and all be friends again. Then Coyote turned to Mouse. So, my friend, I have now saved your life. We are now even, and my debt to you is paid. But mine is such a little life, Mouse protested, and yours is so much larger. I don't think they balance. You should still pay me part. This is ridiculous, Coyote cried. I... Wait, Snake put in hopefully. Let me settle the quarrel. Now you roll the rock away. I'll take Mouse and my coils just the way we were when Coyote came up. We'll be then in a position to decide if... Thank you, said Mouse. It isn't necessary to trouble everyone again. Senior Coyote, we are even.